Let's just pray for about one more minute and Pastor Busek and then take over. A barusca, the wicked Pandoshi to my Marando, the Pandoshi to Zinuska, a lot of sketchy Pandoshi, the Rado sketchy Barrios, and the Ballet of Radio for the Ambassador. The Moses Zandokumbra, <laughs> Ede kepo rumpa yandi jikia musikumbo brando kumbo kumushinda kumbra zike ndelebra malambra ede kemushinda lembra ede kemushinda lamba zandu pro rukumushite kete makakambra masende ruka pala mushite tempo in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Pastor, Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, and we, before we pray, can all of us just praise and thank God in our understanding? concerning the Jesus is Love Foundation International Ministry. Jesus Full, Full Redemption Chapel is the church arm of the Jesus is Love Foundation International. And today marks the 37 years that this ministry has been existing. So where you are, just lift up your heart and lift up your voice, lift up your hands and say, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for the Jesus is Love Foundation International. Essentially, thank you for this church. Thank you for your faithfulness. 
thank you for your thank commitment. You, Father. Thank, you, thank Father. you for being thank our you, God. Father. This you, ministry, Father, this church is not a club. It's not an empire. It is a church, a, a denomination that God started. God had something to do. He found a man who is set as the leader. And he started calling every one of us from far and near. He is still calling others from villages, from hamlets, from settlements, from city, towns, cities, from nations. Let's say, Father, we come before you from the full redemption chapel, United Kingdom, and Lagos branch of Nigeria today, and everyone that, that is joining this call today. I say, Father, we have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your work. You know, when, when God gathered a, 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 a people together, he shows himself mighty in their midst. You know, he helps them, he uses them for his glory, he defends them, if he, he supplies their need, he helps them. So let's say, Father, thank you. Let's bless the Lord for our Father in the Lord, Reverend Dr. Francis Olonode. Let's say, Father, we thank you for him. Thank you for mommy that you have put by his side, Reverend Dr. Mrs. Grace Olonode. We thank you for your hands, your presence. We thank you for your work. Thank you, Lord. Let's say thank you for everyone, every member of this ministry, far and near. Let's thank God for every single brother and sister, every married brother and sister, every family, every life that God has saved, every everyone that has had an encounter with God through this ministry. Let's say we thank you. Every destiny that God has saved through this ministry. We say thank you. Blessed be your name, O oh God. We are very grateful. Thank you. Thank God for counting you worthy to be part of this ministry. It's a privilege. Mommy was saying it in the morning. It's a privilege to be called of God. Like God called our Father and the Lord, He called every one of us. Let's say we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for making me a part of what we are doing. Thank you for the privilege, for the choices portion you have given me. I appreciate you. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. We praise your name for being so good, so faithful to us in this ministry, in this church. Thank you for every one of us as we have come to you, gathering around your feet in our various homes to share your word together. We open our hearts and we ask that the Holy Spirit will speak to us, that each one of us, shall receive that which God has in mind for us. Every instruction, every correction, every reproof, Lord, every guidance, every principle, you will release unto us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering us. In okay, Jesus' Lord. mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Welcome, every one of us to the Bible study this evening. I pray that God Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. And I say Amen. happy anniversary to every one of us. Greater mm. grace, greater unction, greater impact and influence for God shall we make in these last days in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you, Pastor, for giving this opportunity to me to share with the people of God. And briefly this evening, we're going to be considering the way of wisdom, the way 
of wisdom. That's how the topic came to my spirit that we're going to share. And God has highlighted one major aspect of wisdom in my heart that we're going to be looking at the word of God together on. And I believe God is going to bless us. So when I say the way of wisdom, I want us to consider wisdom not in the person of Jesus now, but the operable form of the way of wisdom, like the, like the operations of wisdom, the characteristics of wisdom, the way that the manifestation of wisdom. But it's only one thing that we are going to consider in the way of wisdom. So let's open our Bible to Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. And we're going to be seeing what the scripture says in verse 18. I know the KJV version says, wisdom is the principal thing, but I want us to look at that word of God for the book, the translation of the passion. Proverbs chapter four, verse 18. The scripture says, but the lovers of God walk on the highway of life. Oh, it's Proverbs chapter, chapter four, verse seven. We will still read that verse 18 to verse seven. The scripture says, wisdom, we exhort you when you exhort our truth. She will lead you to honor and favor when you live your life by her insights. Wisdom will lead you to honor and favor when you live your life by her insights. You will be adorned with beauty and grace and wisdom's glory will wrap itself around you, making you victorious in the race. Like each one of us know, we are on heart, running the race of life. And as Christians, incorporated into the race of life, is the Christian race that we are running. The, this insight was just coming to me just this last week that every Christian actually is a human being who is factoring God into his life. That's the difference. We are human beings. We, we live in the economic world. We live on the earth. We the biological systems, everything that every other human being is, apart from the fact that at one time or the other, you as a person got a revelation, an understanding, and of unfolding that you cannot live your life all by yourself. There is a God who created you who has a purpose for you and who sent you here. And believing that God, we begin to factor him into our lives. The, the, this place we have just read said, talks about the insight of wisdom. And I would say wisdom is the practical solutions to life issues. Wisdom is the practical solutions to life issues. And wisdom is not smartness. Wisdom is not oratory. Wisdom is, is not even being intelligent. It's not being, having very high intellectual capacity, but wisdom is that insight. And the Bible makes us understand that it is God who gives 
wisdom. We have read, we have seen very intelligent people. They might be intelligent, they might be high achieving maybe in their career, but you will see their marriage not working. You will see people making a lot of money. They will go and make one dumb decision and they end up in poverty. And that's life. You know, wisdom can also mean improvements, development, becoming better at life. That's wisdom. Having the inner insights, the inner working, the open revelations that God gives, you know, knowing it and wisdom is actually not common. Like we talk about common sense. If we talk about common sense in the sense of the sense of seeing, the sense of hearing, the sense of smelling, that's common. But the common sense in terms of having deeper understanding, deep knowledge, deep workings of life to, to solve life issues, not necessarily problems. Life has its issues. Life has its challenges. And life can bring problems. So that inner working, that open revelation that brings a uh, help us to live life, that bring balance to our lives, that bring effectiveness, efficiency, productivity, profitability in every aspect of our life is wisdom. And if I go down that proverb chapter four, and I'm going to read from verse 20 downward. Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Feel your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you have. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Avoid dishonest speech and pretentious words. Be free from using perverse words, no matter what. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore lies, distractions. Watch where you are going. Stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness. You know, if we study this passage very well, you will see that it takes something higher than the normal default of human functioning to be able to ignore life's distractions, to be able to look straight ahead with fixed purpose. And, you know, if you go to Proverbs chapter 8, you know, wisdom is pre presented to us as a, a, a personality with a lot of things. There is prudence, there is knowledge, there is understanding in that, that surrounds the operation of wisdom. But one major part of the way the operation, the manifestation of wisdom we're looking at this evening is integrity integrity and i want us to go to second peter 
chapter one, so that we will know you might have given your heart to Jesus. We might have become believers following the law. God expects us to increase. He expects us to grow, to develop, to improve, to become better at living our lives, the life of faith. You know, the Christian life is not the normal life on the heart. The Christian life is referred to as the way, the way of the cross, the way of the Lord, the way of the Bible. God expects us after you have, your heart has been opened, my heart has been opened, that we have acknowledged that there is a God and there is a way he wants us to live our lives. He expects us to grow, to increase, to be better, to improve so that we will be getting it more rightly as we go on in life. Second Peter, I want us to see what the scripture says right from verse one. This letter is from Simeon Peter, a loving servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to those who have been given a faith as equally precious has has. KJV says the common faith through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. May grace and perfect peace cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. KJV says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And if we draw an inference from that, it means the grace and the peace, the enabling power of God that will be made available to us as Christians is dependent on the knowledge of God that we have. If you have not known God as the provider, it will be difficult for you to enjoy God as the provider. If you have not known God, as Lord, it to be difficult for you to relate with him as God. The scripture says, may grace and perfect peace cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge. And when the Bible says rich knowledge, it connotes abundant knowledge, robust knowledge, very deep, very wide, not just shallow, not just the, 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 the top of the, or, 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 of the knowledge, but that you are digging deep. You are finding out God and finding out about God yourself. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Verse five, so devote yourselves to lavishly supplementing your faith with goodness. I like the way the KJV translation of the Bible put it, add to your faith virtues. That means don't stay at the point that I believe in God. I have given my heart to Jesus as my personal savior and Lord. The Bible says even the devil, the devil's demons know and they tremble. Say, supplement your faith with goodness and to goodness, hard understanding and to understanding, hard the strength of self-control and to self-control, hard patient endurance and to patient endurance, hard godliness and godliness, had mercy towards your brothers and sisters, and to mercy toward others, had unending law. Since these virtues are already planted deep within you, and you possess them in abundant supply, they will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. But if you lack these things, 
But if anyone lacks these things, he is blind, constantly closing his eyes to the miseries of our faith. And for sins have been washed away. If you follow this reading, you will discover that God is a very robust, very wide, very deep God who does everything he does very, very well and very, very excellently. So we I want to um, um letting us go through these passages so that we can see the importance of growing, becoming better, improving in the way of wisdom to find out things about yourself and things that are beneficial to your life, to your faith, to your marriage, your other relationships, to your job, your career, your, your family. It is not a crime not to know, but it becomes a crime when you do not know and you refuse to find out. So the way, one of the ways of wisdom is taking personal responsibility to search out, to find out, to research. When you are found out, to put into practice, you know, people talk about goals, setting goals. And when you have goals, it is expected you are going to have action plans mapped towards your goal. That if I do these four things, I should be able to achieve this goal, all things being equal. The same way, God wants us to take proactive approach towards our life in total. Every aspect of life, being a Christian is not a reason for being a mediocre. Being a Christian is not a reason for being an average person in every aspect of life. You know, if you read 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7, Apostle Paul was telling the Corinthians, you, as you are bound in utterance, in knowledge, in gift, are bound more in this grace also. And he was talking about giving. That means we must keep increasing, increasing in every aspect of our lives. And if I may just ask, what do you think are the things that are beneficial to your life? You know, we if you want to talk, you, you can just put in the in the chat. What as a Christian, look at yourself. I'm a Christian lady, I'm a Christian man, I'm a Christian student, I'm a Christian husband, you are a Christian, I'm a Christian wife, a Christian mother, a Christian. Just begin to put. If you want to write in your book, you can write in your book. If you want to write on the chat, you can. What are the things? As put it, putting it in perspective, that centrally you are a Christian, or even if you well, we cannot actually take that out that you are a Christian. That's the difference in our lives. We are Christian, Christian, Christian man, Christian woman. What are the things? that we think is beneficial to our life, spirit, soul, and body. Maybe I should give us that opportunity if you want to talk. Can you raise your hand, please? Or you want to put it in the chat box? If you want to put it in the chat box, can you put it in the chat box? What are the things we can, let's learn together. I think if you want to talk, please raise your hand. If you don't want to talk, please put it in your chat box. Wisdom, the way of wisdom is the is taking personal responsibility to know, to search out, to find out things that are beneficial to your existence, to your growth, to your development. I'm waiting. Is anybody talking? Anybody? Anybody writing anything in the chat? Nobody. All right. God bless us. And one major thing that I have highlighted is good character. Good 
character. And that is where I'm coming from tonight. Good character. And the major character we're looking at is the character of integrity. So what is, what is the dictionary meaning of integrity? Anybody wants to tell us what is integrity? Integrity, we're looking at it. That part of integrity as part of the manifestation of the wisdom of God in our lives as Christians. The dictionary says integrity is to be honest and to have strong moral principle. To be honest and to have strong moral principle. Thank you so much. Somebody has put on the chat box, alignment of one's words and action. Thank you, sir. That integrity, one major thing, you know, God does not want us as Christians to just be people of charisma without character. And that's one major error that so many people have gone into. It is good to speak in tongues. It is good to, to be able to operate the gift of the Holy Ghost. But before the gift of the Holy Ghost, it are, is the fruit of the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Holy Ghost. And one of them, if you put the fruit of the Holy Ghost together, in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22, love, joy, peace, kindness, temperance, you know, which is self-control, faithfulness, you would discover that those are things that constitute good character. And I discover it is the same thing God is looking for that human beings also are looking for. So many, many people that appear on the surface and see they are truthful or honest. They are not truthful. It's only because so many people, if there are no cameras around, people will violate the traffic laws. People will, will, will overspeed. If there are no cameras around, people will tend to use their time for other things on the job. If there is no accountability, if there is no consequence, but do you know something that must be clearly shown, demonstrated in the lives of those of us who are children of God is demonstrating godly and good character even when nobody is looking at us, knowing fully well that we are answerable to the Lord God, our Father, who has called us unto glory and unto virtue. I want us to read Ephesians chapter 2. These are the reasons. I want us to look at these reasons why we must develop integrity, why we must develop absolute inner and outward honesty and good, strong moral principles that nothing can change. There are no pressure from any angle to make us to buckle, to say yes to sin or unrighteousness anywhere. So I want us to go to Ephesians chapter two. I am going to be reading from the Passion's translation. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Why must we, why must we develop good character? Why must we have integrity? Why must we be totally honest that even while we are sleeping, where, whether there is anybody supervising or not, we 
can be supervised by the Holy Ghost to do the right thing all, at all time. There's a uh, ten says, we have become his poetry. I think I like it, JV version. He said, we are his workmanship. He said, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each one of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works we will do to fulfill it. The scripture says we are his workmanship. That means it's like saying we are God's master's piece. The best attitude, the best version of human being that God has created because we have been recreated. If it is true that when you really gave your heart to Jesus, you have been recreated. Our spirits that were dead came alive when we acknowledge Jesus as our savior and Lord. And that's why we must show to the world that there is something different about us. There is something at work in us that is different from what is working in the, the scripture called the people of this world, the children of disobedience. All of us were children of disobedience before. We were disobedient to God, living our lives the way we wanted it, serving the purpose and the will of the dead. But now that he has called us, he has called us to glory and to virtue. He called us into a higher life. So it is required of us as Christians that we live a higher life. We operate, we do our things at a higher level than the ordinary people we do it. And if we go to Titus chapter two, Titus chapter two and verse nine. Titus, I want us to see what the scripture says in Titus chapter two, verse nine. The scripture says, exhort bond servants, I'm reading new KJV version, to be obedient to their own masters, to be well pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pivoting, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God as savior in all things. Verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. That is integrity. To live soberly, to live, you know, godly, to live righteously in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. We can begin to see our destiny. It is our destiny as Christian to be zealous for good, good works, to be zealous for the right thing, to do the right thing, whether anybody is going to reward us or not. We know our God will reward us. He actually created us onto a good work. He recreated us. What God wanted the human beings to be when he created Adam and Eve, that is what God expects us to be, like God himself. With knowing he evil, knowing good, but doing good, like God himself, you know, and that's why the Bible says, ye are gods, 
you are the children of the most high. So integrity is living like Jesus will live, you know, aligning our words, our actions. And the third thing is our motivation, our inner reasoning. This is the job we are going to do forever till Jesus comes. Every time, there will always be that striving between our former life, our former person. Apostle Paul said it in Galatians chapter 2. He said, the, the good I want to do, I could not do that. The evil things I did not want to do, those are the things that I see in myself. Who shall deliver me? from this work of I see in my flesh, in my natural operation, natural faculty, default setting as depraved and a fallen man. I see the working, the operation and manifestation of the nature of the devil that I inherited from Adam. That's my explanation. It's not written in the scriptures like that. But it said, but thanks be to Jesus who has delivered me. So as Christian, we have been delivered from the captivity of Satan. We are no longer at the mercy of the functioning of the natural human nature. You know, we always say, naturally, every human being is selfish. If you don't believe it, you test yourself. When next there is a free food, you test yourself. There is free food, a lot of it. You, you are not responsible for it. Maybe ceremony. The natural instinct is for you to grab this, grab that, grab that. But the retraining of, of, of our spirits and Training at home tells you just take a little for the other people to go to, to take also. So if not moral people that are not born again, you know, in this society, you will see generally speaking, people tend, you know, at the surface level, people tend to tell the truth, even though truth sometimes might be doctored. Truth, naturally, truth, doctor, just putting facts. People use facts to prove falsehood to even be, as long as you've got your evidences in the court, you, if you can prove it, it's possible. But as children of God, the workings of God in our spirit is because of the fear and the honor that we have for God. He expects our private life to be the same as our public life. So what is integrity? It is living above reproach. And if we look at the life, there are two characters I love so much in the Bible. That's Daniel and Joseph. There, there was no indent on their characters. If I was studying Daniel, and the Bible says the other president that wanted to, to, to implicate Daniel said they were watching. We are never ever going, not going to be able to get any accusation against this man in the things that pertain to the job, the, uh, his operation in this kingdom, except in the issue of his God. That means they were looking at him. He wasn't doctoring any documents. He wasn't getting late to work. He wasn't, he wasn't cheating the government in any way. They, they watch and watch. That's the life that God expects those of us Christians to live, not cut corners. Integrity is having an honest, open life. Open you are transparent, you are clear. 
we are not saying one thing, why we mean other things. Emotions can rise high sometimes. You can, on different things, I'm never going to even do this again. But if you are a true child of God, the Holy Ghost comes back to tell you, you have not so learned Christ. And I, I, I think every one of us should sit down and look at it. What are the things that I have not learned from Christ that are still manifesting in my life? What are the things I have learned of Christ that I must inculcate in my life? Jesus Christ, as a young man, when his parents got him from Jerusalem and said, ah, we've been troubled. The Bible says he went and he submitted himself unto them until the day of his manifestation. So God is calling us to a higher, he has called us. He is just only remind us, I have called you unto glory, unto virtue. And when we talk about glory, you can begin to see something so majestic, so clear, so transparent that people stand in awe of it. That's the light God has called us to as Christians. As Christians at work, it, it, we, we cannot afford to be involved in office gossips. We cannot afford as Christian students to cut corners. We cannot afford as Christian wife or husband, we lost for another man or another woman can come to your heart. But God expects us to deal with it with the word of God. As integrity, being true to our commitment and if we, if we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, those are the definition of integrity for us as children of God. Can we open to Philippians chapter 4? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. I, I am reading from the Passion Translation. The scripture says, let me read from verse 6. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding we guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. Your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. Honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy merciful and kind and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. Put into practice the example of all that you have heard from me or seen in my life and the God of peace will be with you in all things. That is integrity. Lovely, pure things. What are the things that you wouldn't want anybody to hear that you said? What are the things that you wouldn't want anybody to know that you have done? Though that means we shouldn't do that. As Christians, we shouldn't do the right thing because the law enforcement agents are going to catch up with us. We should do things because we have a regard for God. If you go to Proverbs chapter one, I was surprised. When it, where the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The, the partial translation gave uh, this meaning. Let me see if, if, if I can locate that word. It, uh, 
it, okay, let me read Proverbs chapter one for us. Just listen. Here, and I think this is where I'm going to stop so that we can entertain questions we can discuss together. Here are kingdom revelations. Like I said, wisdom is the revelation that comes from God on how life works. And words of wisdom given to empower you to reign in life. Written as Proverbs by Israel's King Solomon. Verse 2. Within these saints will be found the revelation of wisdom and the impartation of spiritual understanding. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true wisdom. Those who cling to these words will receive discipline to demonstrate wisdom in every relationship and to choose what is right and just and fair. That is integrity. Choosing what is right, just and fair. This proverb will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise, to give youth the understanding of their design and destiny. Where can we find that? The scripture says, you will be able to acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. These kingdom revelations will break open your understanding to unveil the deeper meaning of parables. Verse seven, we cross the threshold of true knowledge when we live in obedience devotion to God. Stubborn, no, it's holds. We never stop to do this for they scorn through wisdom and knowledge. That means when we fail to operate our lives by the principle of the word of God, we are stubborn, behaving as if we know it all, and we are scorning through wisdom and through knowledge. The Bible says, Pay close attention to your father's wise word, for their insight will bring you success, adorning you with grace-filled thoughts. And when peer pressure compels you to go with the crowd and sinners invite you to join in, you must simply say no. Verse 20. 20. Wisdom's praises are sung in the streets and on, okay, Go, let me go down to where there's this place that the begin where the Bible talks about the beginning of wisdom is that when the, that like the fear of the Lord is actually you are just stepping into wisdom. You know when we begin to fear the Lord, that is when we are stepping into wisdom, and that is integrity. When we do all that we do. For the sole purpose of pleasing the Lord, honoring the Lord, and aligning our lives to the purpose of God, not for human praises, not for not to avoid human punishment. That is why, when we are living in integrity, and I'm going to go to Psalm 15. The scripture says, Yahweh, who dares to dwell with you? Who presumes the privilege of being close to you? Living next to you in your shiny place of glory. They are passionate and all-hearted. That is integrity. Always sincere and always speaking the truth. For their hearts are trustworthy. Ask yourself, integrity and loyalty. Are you loyal to God? Are you loyal to your words? Are you loyal to where God has put you? Are you loyal to your workplace? Are you loyal to the church of God? Are you a Christian who, when you are in the midst of other Christians, you behave as Christian? When you are in church, you, you behave like a Christian. When you are at work or at in school, 
Nobody can even trace any, any Christ towards you. The Bible says people of integrity, they refuse to slander or insult others. They will never listen to gossip or rumors, nor would they ever harm a friend with their word. They will despise evil and evil workers while commending the faithful ones who follow after the truth. They make firm commitment and follow through, even at great costs. Are you somebody, you're a Christian who will say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, or you pledge in church, you don't redeem. Aligning our words with our action. They never crush others with exploitation. A Christian of integrity will never utilize any, on, we never take any undue advantage of others. Even a Christian of integrity will not make use of his due rights and privileges at times. If you go to, if you read about Nehemiah, he was saying it, the food that the portion of the governor, I did not take it because it was placing too much burden on the people that were contributing. They never crush others with exploitation and they will never be brought, but with a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things will never be shaky. They will stand firm forever. I'm going to close with this. I read an article about a Jew who wanted to buy, I think, a media house from, an, um, from a Gentile. You know, every other person that is not a Jew are Gentiles to the Jew. And the person, the Jew, gave so much good business to this unbeliever that the unbeliever asked him, why did you give me so much profit with this business dealing? The, I learned the Jew said, I want you to be happy doing business with me. That within six months of that Jew, is oh, he's a Christian that had a business with Jew. Within six months of that Christian, doing that business dealing with that Jew, he was converted and gave his life to Jesus. When he saw the life, the motive, the expression, and the lifestyle of that Christian. So the challenge is to us to live a life of integrity, very honest, even to the minutest detail of everything we have got to do with the motivation of honoring and pleasing our father, not to avoid human consequence. And I pray God will bless us in Jesus' name. Pastor. Mm, hallelujah. Please. Um, yeah. Take it all. We'll just pray one prayer as we close today. The Lord Jesus, we've been blessed. And I just want us to pray a prayer that came to my spirit. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 26, verse 41, He said that the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. We've learned that there has to be an alignment between what we say and what we do. And many times the flesh gets in the way such that we are not able to align our words and our actions and our deeds. So the prayer is this, Lord, help me to crucify the flesh. That that willingness of the spirit might translate into my daily living. That's the prayer. That the Lord would help us to crucify the flesh that the willingness of the spirit mm -hmm. might, might translate into our daily lives. Let's just pray that in one minute in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, we ask mm -hmm. that you help us to crucify the flesh, mm -hmm. help us to nail the flesh to the cross, mm -hmm. 
that the willingness in our faith, the willingness to do good, the willingness to obey you, the willingness to treat others right, the willingness to follow you through thick and thin, that all those things, that willingness will translate into our daily lives, into our daily living. In the name of my Jesus. My daily choices, my daily actions, Jesus. my daily responses. In the name of Jesus. Help me. You live a life of honesty, honest to the minute uh, detail. Uh, regardless of what happens with our flesh, regardless Jesus. of what the flesh is Holy saying, we'll be able to ignore the flesh and we'll be, be able to follow, follow the you. spirit. To In the name of Jesus. Lord, to show Father, you to others. You. That my righteous life we, we, we exist that of the normal human being, Pharisees, religious people, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we are praying. Help me. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this evening. Amen. Thank you for the vessel we have used to speak to us. Thank you for all of us that we have listened and those that we yet listen. Father, we receive wisdom. It says if, if any of you lack wisdom, let him have mm-hmm. the Lord that gives mm-hmm. liberally and upbraids not. You give and you don't insult us on it. Lord, we ask that you supply, that will be a supply of wisdom in every area of our life where we require it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let our help us that our walk in life be back with great integrity, integrity towards God, integrity towards mm-hmm. fellow men. That even when there will be no mm-hmm. there might be no consequence for our action, we will still choose to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. Okay. Lord, mm-hmm. we thank you once again for, for Redemption Chapel. Jesus is Lord Foundation International. We ask that today, as we celebrate 37 years, that Lord, it will be a marker for great things, be a marker for acceleration, be a marker for greatness, that mm-hmm. Jesus will be glorified mm-hmm. in our life mm-hmm. and in everything that concerns us. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name, we are praying. Mm-hmm. Um, quick announcement. They, there was, we had a communion this morning. Communion would continue tomorrow morning, Thursday, and then on Friday. Dad will be speaking between six and seven every day. And it is our duty to wake up early and join those meetings. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Don't forget the daily prayers we have for the convention, 8.30 to 9 o'clock every single day until the convention. We'll pray for the convention. We'll pray for the completion of Glory Land International Conference Center. The Lord bless you. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. I will catch you next week in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.